and in this tutorial I'll cover uh, how to apply seamless textures and what they look like once they're applied. Um, poor, pretty much uh, the seamless textures you still have to UV the objects you're looking at uh, such as the wall so they still have to be UV'd but you don't have to Photoshop specifically put the textures in the right place um, you can just scale the amount of rocks up and down. So if I jump over to Photoshop we can see here I have the UV pattern of that wall right here which is this piece and I can put the rocks on here. I can specifically go over and drag them across and then I can leave them on here and I would have a rock pattern on there. Or I can scale them down so that they're not so large and I could have a smaller rock pattern on there and kind of specifically put the textures I want where, they, they, where I want. And normally you do that for most textures you make but when using a seamless texture you don't have to do that. Uh, what seamless basically means is that when you put another texture down, let's say I copy this one and move it upwards straight above, uh, at the point that they connect edge to edge you can't tell the difference as a seam there. Uh, they match oops, uh, perfectly in place. If I take both of these and copy both of these and pull them across uh, they'll match oops, uh, perfect again so you can't tell where they occur. So when you look at your wall or when you look at the UV shell of that uh, you'll see that the wall looks like it's all just solid rocks and it's hard to tell th that it's repeating pattern if you do it well enough. Um, when creating the pattern all you have to do is go over to uh, filter other offset and take half the number you're using. I used a 2048 texture map so half of 2048 is 1024. When it offsets by 1024 you paint out the line so in this case you don't see the line. Uh, so let's cancel out of that. If I go over to this one, this one's a non-repeating one. This was the, uh, I got this from, this is the original that I used to make this one. So if I were to go and repeat the same thing, filter, other, offset, 1024, you'll see that seam coming down here. Um, at that point you just press OK and you go through and paint that away. Uh, there's different tools you can use. You can use the clone stamp, uh, you can use the healing brush. Healing brush is this one right here, hidden under uh, one of those. And essentially how that works is you hold the Alt click and you start painting and it should magically start trying to match rocks uh, to other rocks and you can kind of just pick different areas let's say I want more of a gap right there I'll paint that gap right here uh, that's right about there and you can kind of put that in there and start painting away that seam uh, you can use clone stamp over here which is this one and you can say I want uh, an exact spot of that and paint that exact spot right there and you can see where the mouse is still referencing from and painting in that pattern and you can kind of start painting it away. Uh, once you're done you just save it out as a seamless texture and you should get something like this. Once you put that in Photoshop, I mean from Photoshop, once you put that in Maya, uh, in order to adjust that, let's say I make that, um, let's make a new one, the one that's not seamless. So I'll make a Lambert and I'll take this new Lambert, click on that, double click it so it opens up here and I'll go over to where it says color and go grab that new file or the non seamless file. So it's under computer, storage drive, uh, seamless, non seamless. So I'll grab the non seamless one that I haven't made seamless yet. So I'll take that and jump backwards. And so it's attached. All I do is middle mouse the scroll wheel, click and drag that onto here, and it applies it on there. Uh, by default it fits the entire thing. So if I pull up the texture editor you can see when I click on this piece it fills it. So it did what it's supposed to do. It's only one single use which is fine so you won't see any seamlessness. But those rocks are giant massive compared to how big this house is. So that's that's a huge rock. So I want to scale that down. So I click on the texture again. Let's close out that um, and go inside the texture we assigned to it and click on the place 2D texture right there. I can go over to where it says repeat UV and set that to let's say 5. So 5 by 5 and it repeats in both directions. I'll get a much more matching uh, size. But if I look closely I'll start to see that seam running up there where the rocks don't actually match. Uh, and so when you, if the player or character walks up to their walls they're going to start seeing these inconsistent um, cut lines in the surface of the rock wall. So that's what the seamless texture or the non-seamless texture does. If you take the seamless and you put that on there you should get 
uh, a nice clean rock face that you don't see any of those lines because it's, it's seamless you can scale these. If I set that two by two, uh, you'll see that, oops, wrong one, uh, this one. Jump inside here and set that two by two. It just keeps scaling it. If I want to set that to 10 by 10, it'll make it even denser. So the entire house scales evenly because it's all using the seamless texture. I just dropped it on each of the walls. I don't need to use uh, specifically custom Photoshop each texture. Just drop it on the entire piece. And that works pretty well. Uh, let's set that back to 5 by 5 because that seems a little more reasonable on rock size. Uh, and if you export this piece out, it'll go out with the 5x5 five five setting right into Unity and you won't have to worry about it. If in Unity you wanted to custom adjust that, let's say here's the Unity scene, all you do is click on that material, so not the texture file, the texture file, the stone wall, it's just the texture. Uh, so stone wall material gives you the tiling option. So if I set this to one by one, Again, it's the same thing I saw the first time. It's a really huge uh, texture pattern. What I want to do is set this and tile as higher. Uh, and if I do 10 by 10, I'm going to get the same thing I saw in Maya. And 5 by 5 looks like the more appealing texture type. So that's where the tiling setting is and what it does and how the benefit of using it to create your textures. And in case you forgot where the um, how to put textures on something, uh, you just go over to uh, say stone wall texture, and you can either assign it to the material or drag it directly on the object you want. Uh, by doing so, it'll automatically create a brand new uh, material. Uh, actually, it should have, but I guess not. Usually, that's. I don't know. Oh, it's like a material up here. There it is. So it automatically created a brand new material. It just happened to have the same name as before. And once you've dropped the material on there, uh, the texture creates the material, and then you can tile that upwards. Uh, because it's such a large ground surface, I could probably go 10 by 10, and it'll still look pretty big, or look fine. So yeah, just dropping the object on there, or you can manually go to create material this way, and then go attach that texture to it. So it slide down said stone floor is a repeating texture. I drop that on there and scroll up to that new material and toss that on here. Set the tiling on that to, let's try 16 by 16. Boom. And I have a nice repeating texture there which has no uh, cut marks or seam lines. It's a nice clean pattern. So that's how you would create the material if you don't already have that and how to set the numbers on that as well. Uh, be careful when you set your numbers. Uh, there's a, something called secondary maps, and tiling this won't change anything, uh, at least not visibly on the screen. Uh, secondary maps are used for light mapping and such like that, uh, and light mapping matters when you bake your lighting, but not for what we're doing at the moment, so be careful when you tile to tile the main map, not the secondary map.